tell us all about your work with near-death experiences. What can we learn from that? And does it speak to anything? Does it inform the discussion about, especially to the naturalist, about is there such a thing as, a, as life beyond the grave? The, the key is the evidential cases, the cases where people can start talking, uh, let's say they're in a hospital room and they are uh, uh, coding, they, they're having a, a, a near-death experience, but they're they are drawn to where, they're just, to where their family is, let's say another floor away from there in a way room, and they can tell you what people are saying or what's happening in that room, or maybe a car accident that happens outside the hospital. They can explain these things. That, that, those are the cases, the adventure cases, I think, that are the most helpful in terms of evidence against naturalism. And you said it correctly. I think a uh, uh, near-death experience is one of the most challenging uh, arguments against naturalism, against the view which, among other things, says we don't live that death. You probably won't be surprised to learn that one of the most powerful reasons that people struggle with the idea of God, and by God I mean any God, is the idea and the presence of evil. All worldviews, it doesn't matter where you come from, what philosophical foundation, atheist, agnostic, Eastern world religion, Western Christianity, belief or no belief, whatever your worldview is, everyone must deal with the problem of evil, not just the Christian worldview. The definition of evil is A, the lack of or the corruption of goodness. But that definition comes with a certain presupposition, doesn't it? Check it out. The presupposition is that there remains a standard of goodness by which we weigh that evil against. Do you see that? So we see there's two major categories of evil. There's an emotional category. That's the person who says pastorally, I'm in pain. I need you, God. I need to know your presence, that you're still there. But then we have the intellectual problem. Evil is a problem. There are good reasons for believing a good God exists, despite horrendous evils. We must distinguish between two philosophical problems of evil. We have a logical and a probabilistic problem. There's a logical problem that says if evil exists, it's necessarily true that an all-good, omnibenevolent, which means all-good, an all-powerful, omnipotent God cannot exist and vice versa. My response to that there's no actual logical contradiction. God may have a reason for allowing evil. And then we have the probabilistic problem, or the probable or improbable argument, which says even if it's logically possible that God and evil coexist, but given the vast amount of unnecessary or gratuitous evil in the world, an all-good, all-powerful God probably doesn't exist. This, these are the atheist arguments. My response is, are we in the best situ uh, position to determine whether evil is gratuitous? If God were to remove pain and suffering so that the consequences of sin would be hidden from us, we would live in an illusory world. It would all be an illusion to us. Having the impression that we are doing fine without being reconciled to God. Regarding natural evils, I want to say this, for those of you who bring up the question of tsunamis, non-moral evils. Excellent question. Keep in mind that phenomena such as tornadoes, hurricanes, and earthquakes actually serve important functions in maintaining livable conditions on Earth. Why is the Bible not in chronological order? The Bible is in several different orders depending on which Bible. The Bible that you and I have, the Protestant Bible, uh, we have Martin Luther to thank. He really chose where the books go, by the way. Uh, but it's actually in, in genre order. We have the historical books uh, in the beginning. We have the poetry books in the middle. You think of Song of Solomon. You think of Psalms. You think of the Proverbs. And then we have the books of prophecy. You have those great prophetic books of Jeremiah, Isaiah, and then the minor prophets. 